a familiar brush gets an upgrade. <laughs> Bits. Welcome back, Hobby Maniacs. I'm Rob Bear from SpikyBits.com, and today we are taking a look at the new Army Painter Masterclass Series uh, dry brush set. These little guys right here. These little guys. Uh, they were nice enough to send one of these over to us uh, to you know promote and review for them. Kind of the thing we always do uh, for Army Painter. A lot of companies out there, uh, for that matter. But um, these, you've probably seen them already, folks are using them. Uh, they had some videos already done kind of ahead of time as kind of a bump. But I, I got to play around with these. Uh, so I'm going to show you a few things about their store, and then we're going to kind of uh, take a look at them over on the paint table, and we're going to actually use them and finish up uh, some of the detail work and, and some of the base coat work that I was doing on some of my Adeptus Custodes with these, which I thought, I was like, huh, I wonder if I can use these on my current paint schemes that I'm already working on. So we're going to kind of take it from there and pick up kind of in the middle of a project, but it was just like perfect timing almost uh, serendipitous, uh, so to speak. So let's jump over and check, it, check them out on the website, talk about costs, and then actually use them. So here's their website, and actually I started a page early. So here's their website, <laughs> yeah, I digress. Uh, and if you're looking for any of their products, uh, you can just kind of go across the top here and just kind of bounce around and there's the uh, the dry brush. But what's really nice about their site is they have a whole bunch of uh, different kind of like tutorials and things all across the top here, like painting guides, a store locator, like, you know, if you're like, hey, I just want to drive somewhere and see if they got the rack or call ahead just to make sure because, you know, COVID and stuff. But they have a lot of resources on the website, which is kind of what I'm showing you. I mean, right here, they, they're like, hey, here's how to paint some you know, dope ass uh, ruin terrain. So just take a minute, kind of go through your site and there's a lot of really great content out here. But we're gonna jump into the actual sales page here for just brushes in general, because they have a bunch of different brushes too. They got singles, they got Lucy's. Uh, if you go to any stores, they'll have the rack with all the, the loose brushes on it, but they also have brush sets as well uh, that are pretty good. And I'm gonna show you one right here. There's two different ones. I think there's a uh, hobbyist and then this one, uh, most wanted brush right here. Um, which kind of bundles up all their most wanted stuff. So here's the dry brush set and it's it's only going for $19.99 and I just want to stop because I know what all the comments are going to be like and be like, hey Rob, these look like makeup brushes and you know, they do uh, and you know, there's no comparison. I mean, makeup brushes, uh, depending on where you get them, could be a lot cheaper than these um, made with different, uh, you know, consistency bristles. These are goat hair. Um, they are, I, I lost a couple of bristles, but they said you're going to lose a couple at first as you're using them, but then, you know, it, it stopped. It was just a couple. And, you know, goat hair um, has a different consistency, obviously. It's a, it's generally a little bit coarse, I think, but these, these are very softer. Um, so I don't know if they're processed different or anything like that. It's just, it, it's just a very good brush in general. I'll show you here in a minute. And then there's the complete opposite spectrum where there's premium bespoke dry brush sets out there that have more dry brushes they have things you know inside of it like dampening pads and things like that and you know that that stuff's great i, I can't speak to any of it i really don't know but if you want to spend 79 dollars or 89 dollars or whatever it is on, on a set of dry brushes that's cool man you know if that makes you happy and learn some new techniques that's great like go for it like that is good stuff that's what makes the hobby great i personally like to buy the premium stuff sometimes because i, I personally feel like it's gonna last longer but to me, spending 20 bucks on a set of dry brushes that I can buy off the shelf at my local game store or, you know, at a convention or on a website from a retailer that, you know, has been around for a number of years and definitely dedicated to hobby. That kind of speaks, you know, volumes to me was something I know, kind of a, a new factor. I'd love to do a review on, on those other, you know, makeup brushes versus these versus, you know, some premium dry brushes. Maybe we can do that in the future. But for now, we're just focusing on these. So I just wanted to throw that out there real quick. Sorry to kind of go off on a tangent, but I just anticipate what a lot of the comments are gonna be. I can't even compare these to other dry brushes, premium or makeup brushes or otherwise, because I don't really use them to paint miniatures. I do put on a little bit of makeup, you know, cause I'm Mike, I have a very light complexion, so I do have to put on a little bit of base to be in front of these lights. I don't know if I would dry brush with that makeup brush that I use for that. Uh, it's very big, it's very poofy, maybe a tank, maybe a Titan, but then again, I got an airbrush for that. So I kind of feel like that's not, not comparison for myself. So the Masterclass Dry Brush Set, which I'm gonna show you today, 
Uh, it looks like it is on sale now. I thought it was still on pre-order. It looks like it's actually on sale, so you might find this on the rack at your local retailer. Uh, it's $19.99. It comes with three brushes. We're gonna dive in and take a little bit of a closer look, but let's look at these pictures real quick. So here they're kind of showing the different sizes, 15 millimeter, 12 millimeter, and seven millimeter. Bigger terrain, you know, smaller kind of bigger miniatures and then smaller miniatures. We're gonna probably use the moderate and the miniature dry brush today. Uh, here's the kind of explaining the goat hair and things like that. I, I, I kind of like these brushes. I feel like they got a good bounce. They got, they hold a lot of uh, paint. They clean up well. I've already cleaned them. So, um, and you probably can't even tell looking at them, which ones I actually already used and cleaned and put back in the package because they, they, they're really good hairs. And if you take care of them, I think, um, they're going to, they're going to last, uh, for the long run for you. I, I still have most of my army painter brushes from 13 years ago. <laughs> I clean them and, and they've lasted. So, uh, they're also good for, uh, sty stipling or that kind of doing that. The airbrush lifter is like a technique. I don't know what it is because I haven't uh, messed around with it. I think it is called push blending. I think is the, is the name of it. I don't know anything about it, but apparently it's a new thing. So I got to look into it, but, uh, I'll tell you what, I have about zero time to learn new techniques. <laughs> <laughs> Unless they're gonna save me time. So there you go. But if you can get that kind of technique from a dry brush I am definitely interested in learning more about that at some point. Maybe we'll have a future tutorial on that So enough talking from me. Let's look at the brushes and dive right in So here they are right here and you can see they're a very similar size package So you'll probably see them maybe on the shelf together kind of behind or in front of each other So, you know always Kind of look if it's your thing and you're going to a store to kind of scoop it up. Well, it might be a little hidden. Here is Army Painter's old dry brush. You might remember this one. I say old, it's not like super old. This is the same one they've had since like 2007 or whatever, right? I use this thing mostly to apply wash. Sometimes I use it for some targeted dry brushing, which is great. Um, but I, f I feel like these ones here are probably more what most people are going to use, you know, because you're you're not really going for that targeted dry brush. You're going, or uh, you're going for a mostly all over, like you saw on this those pieces, like those owl bears or like terrain or something like that. Now getting this thing open, uh, it's a snap. Like I just kind of basically repackaged it just to show you. Uh, but you know, these are kind of small. Like I say small, but like compared to their other brushes right there. They're, 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 they are small. Like they don't have the, the little uh, stem here and they don't have the clamps or anything like that. They kind of have a big clamp. And you know, I guess it's, I guess it's more for kind of getting in there and, and, and doing that, that sort of work. You know, um, uh, let's take a look at the bristles themselves. Okay, so here they are. And you can see that, uh, well, for the most part, uh, they all look the same. They look like just basically what they look like in uh, the package and all the promos and everything. Uh, I have used and cleaned all three of these. Now I don't know. Maybe I used maybe I used this one more, so it kind of kind of flattened out. You can see where I haven't used this one quite as much, so it has a little hair hanging off right there. But for the most part, you know, those came off of these two already, um, and it's pretty pretty smooth. These are super soft. They're super soft. Like I I, I love these brushes just in general. Now I've already cleaned them up uh, with a little bit of this Gentastic cleaner from Monument Games. Army Painter doesn't really have a brush cleaner. This stuff is amazing. I've done a tutorial on this. Uh, use this to condition, condition and wash your brushes right out of the package. They'll last you a very long time. Uh, if you have to clean brushes that are old and, ex and pre-existing, which I actually cleaned some of my Army Painter brushes from 13 years ago, you can use the Windsor Newton stuff to get them uh, back to a nice base to start with to condition them after every use, which I definitely recommend. I think this cost me eight, around eight dollars and uh, a couple of years ago and i've got most of it well, i'd say i'm down to about right there and this brush cleaner i don't remember how much it is but you can check out the the video which i'll definitely link in this post uh, to get you off on the right foot and to continue to protect your investment with these uh, brushes right here now today what we're going to do is we're going to actually dry brush uh, a custody we're gonna re, uh, re dry brush a custody here so i have these that are already washed and ready to go and by the way i used army painter paints just totally coincidental. Uh, their metallics I prefer over pretty much everybody else because they're, they're very poppy and they're great. And yes, there's matter stuff out there that looks great. There's very, very many companies out there that, that make really great metallics. I just prefer the Army Painter for my metallics. As it so happens, well, custodies are mostly metallic. So, hey, it worked out. Um, and then I just used the reds because I had them and they're very easy to use. And we're going to do some reds today too, because they just kind of go together as, as like basically a super easy one, two, three kind of combo punch right there. 
So we're gonna get some paint out. We're gonna work on this guy, uh, do a couple different uh, dry brushings, one on the armor and then probably base coat and dry brush up uh, the highlights on this uh, red right here. So let's get to it. Oh, hey, real quick. I wanted to mention that, you know, Army Painter does make a wet palette, right? So if you wanted to use that technique uh, with the kind of like the, the moistening pad kind of sort of thing where you use this and the push blending, I think it's called, I haven't looked into it, but I don't see why you couldn't just pick up these brushes and use this uh, for that technique. Now, I don't know much about it. I'm sure people are gonna comment on it, like it's great or it's buster, or it isn't even what I think it is, whatever. <laughs> I just haven't had a chance to look it up yet. But those are the three techniques that they advocate for these dry, for these dry brushes, dry brushing, push blending, and stifling effects. Stifling is just simply, you put your brush in the paint, you get as much off as you can, you know, as a normal dry brush, and then you just kind of, dab it and dabbing is basically stifling it, it produces a, a an interesting effect uh that's great for you know uh, random camos and, and different kind of uh, armor plating and things like that it looks great it's just not nothing we're going to cover in this i just want to do some straight dry brushing not reinvent the wheel just use these products as intended as most people can relate to and see how it looks and see how the brushes hold up so I'm kind of already a little bit of a fibber because I know these brushes uh, hold up just fine. So step one is you're gonna want to get out a little bit of paint. I actually had some I was working with uh, from last night on my wet palette already. So I have a 50-50 mix uh, that I've created using uh, plate mail metal and bright gold, which I'm trying not to get that in the wet palette, uh, which produces this sort of uh, super shiny, uh, I don't know, we'll, we'll say an amalgam between the two, which, you know, it looks great. It's a very, very shiny gold, and I use that to highlight all my custodies. So we're just gonna grab, um, let's go with the bigger dry brush because the majority of this figure is indeed gold, and of course I got gold on my hand right there. So we're gonna get a little bit of paint on uh, the dry brush here, and I'm putting it into wet palette, but you don't you don't have to worry. I mean, the wet, the wet palette is not, there's not water coming up through it. Um, you probably noticed the pennies that I put in here too because what these do is they actually act as um, an annotator or a, like a zinc anode, and they will actually get all moldy and crap uh, before the rest of the uh, the palette itself. So you can uh, just kind of throw these away as they get kind of gross, and they'll keep your whole uh, palette underneath there uh, to, from getting gross. I actually did that in the uh, uh, when I worked at the shipyard. That was one of my jobs to uh, know about the zinc anodes to uh, keep the uh, whole of the vessels fresh. Anyways. So uh, I digress, we're gonna get back to this. So we're gonna get a little paint on here and then we're uh, just going to take our paper towel here and get most of the paint off. So the less paint you put on a dry brush just in general is usually better because you want to use the dry brush when you don't see any streaks of paint coming off here and getting on the paper towel. So you still see paint on here, but it's not transferring off quite as readily. So then we just go over to our model itself, which you can see majority is that gold. If we get some on the red area that we have in base coat, no big deal. If we get some on the blade, we still gotta go in and block this all out, so no big deal. So we're at the uh, the met, air quotes a messy a dry brush phase. And all we're gonna do is kinda take it and go in one direction, not back and forth. Dry brushing is not back and forth. We're just gonna go in one direction and kinda pull the bristles. And what they're gonna do is transfer the paint uh, from the bristles on the highest areas right there, which you can see it's already done on that shoulder pad and just kind of hit up and do all that wonderful free highlighting work. So check that out. In two seconds, we've already pretty much highlighted that whole shoulder pad um, with the highlight color. So we did a wash uh, or we did a base coat and then we did a wash and then boom, we did our highlight color right there. Now they're, they're a little bright. These are very poppy metals. Uh, they're very hard to get 100% on camera, so I apologize for that. But I'm just gonna go through and just gently go over all of the areas, like the chest and things, with uh, a little bit of dry brush here, and it's gonna transfer, it uh, looks like, very, very awesome, super easy uh, to do right there. You can see I already got the chest, and there's plenty of paint still left on here. So I went ahead and finished out all the dry brushing on this and it took yeah, maybe like another minute or two, not, nothing too crazy. And you can see it, everything looks great right there. Now I had, there's areas where I don't have any wash like on uh, the van braces right here because those are actually gonna be painted uh, brown and worked up from there. So don't worry about any of that. That's just a, that's just happenstance right there. But everything looks wonderful. Uh, everything looks great right here. So what I'm gonna do 
is base coat some red on here, probably just a base red, what is this, chaotic red right here. Uh, but before I do that, since I'm not gonna dry brush anymore with a larger dry brush, I definitely recommend if you're gonna have downtime in your dry brushing, you need to wash and rinse out your dry brushes, right? So what I'm gonna do is get it slightly wet, uh, and then I'm gonna grab some of this brush cleaner uh, goop right here, this stuff's great, it's from Monument Hobbies, and I'm just gonna grab a little chunk, and this is probably too much, and I'm just gonna put it in uh, the kind of fold on my hand. I'm gonna get it all around down into the ferrules because that's where, where the clamps is I like to call them because that is where the dirt hides and causes pressure on your bristles and causes your bristles uh, to actually kind of um, snap and fold and expand. And that's one of the major things that actually ruins uh, your brush in and of itself. So I've got a whole bunch of soap on there. I'm gonna take what I'm not using and then I'm gonna rinse this out in my water pot over here and wipe it all down. And there it is, nice and new, ready for, uh, well, A, to dry, because there's a lot of bristles in there, but ready for a dry brushing again. So there's our base coat, all done up, super nice, uh, nice and solid all the way around. Now, when it comes to dry brushing, sometimes you wanna skip uh, color steps, right? So like if I was to do this with the brush, just uh, layering and stuff, I would use this Dragon Red, but I'm gonna take a gamble here. I'm just gonna jump up the straight pure red from this chaotic red uh, that I base coated it, right? So I'm just gonna get same thing as before, just gonna dab a little bit of paint, the least amount, the better. And then we're gonna work it off the actual bristles itself right here but I grabbed a little too much, so we're gonna spend a minute doing that. But once you get it to where it's not transferring a whole bunch off, then you know it's money time. So we're using a smaller dry brush right now uh, because we're gonna to try to be more controlled with this. If we use that big fat dry brush, we would get red over, uh, or the medium one, we would get red over all that gold work we just did. And that's just a kind of a no-go here. So I'm wondering how this is gonna look. Ooh, okay, I see it, I see it now. So it's not quite as pronounced as I thought it was gonna be. And uh, there you can see that it has already transferred itself just to the uh, raised edges right there. So it's a nice, very muted kind of um, work up from that base color right there up to that bright color. Now, in theory, maybe I would want to use this Dragon Red um, to base coat it and then pull it up a little bit more maybe with this um, pure red worked into a little yellow to make it kind of like the color that uh, ketchup and mustard look like when you mix them together. Like that would be an option right there. But this is very striking and it doesn't, you know, it lets the gold kind of speak for itself. And then you're like, oh, okay, well, you know, the tabard is, uh, the tabard's highlighted as well. Super easy, hit it with a nice thin glaze of like uh, flesh or maybe even black, whatever color you do up here, you could probably wash. This would look just fine. It would just work into there. And speaking of which, you would probably want to end with a little bit of a glaze up here, uh, down almost onto uh, all of the areas here, uh, just to kind of pull that. If, if you feel like it's a little too, too much on the edging, uh, which I don't feel like this is. I feel like these brushes are very controlled and if you uh, dab off enough of the paint, then you're not gonna have that kind of like dry brushy type look. This technique saved a lot of time for me on my uh, new air quotes custodies. Not anything I had already painted to be a certain style, like uh, like what I've got going right here with everything super highlighted, super high, hyper highlighted and all uh, worked up, which you can see, but these newer troops, uh, this will save me a lot of time, whereas something like this took, you know, 30 minutes to maybe 45 minutes to go in with a brush and hit all those edges and multiple steps. This will be super, super quick and uh, very much duplicatable and easy across all of my uh, wardens. So uh, the custody guard probably going to look a little better than the, uh, than the, than the wardens, but that's okay, uh, at least for my project there. So now I can work up uh, the rest of the project. Um, the rest of the detail work like the van braces like I was saying and all, all the work here But you know, we saved a lot of time with these dry brushes, which I think was great and it was very good timing So thank you very much to our army painter for getting those to me But I tell you what that is a great looking effect for not a lot of time not a lot of effort uh, that I think will work great on raised armor or um, Maybe not so much on tanks, but you could uh, you could use the bigger brush on on tanks and things, um, you know, just be very careful around the edges and you don't want to get a lot of paint on the flat areas. But anything with a lot of uh, 
tight, crisp detail over a lot of area, these dry brushes are gonna work great on. So like what you saw in uh, their product placement um, shots, you, you, stuff like uh, feathers, stuff like fur, stuff like stone, um, anything like that, textures on bases, gonna be great. Super tight armor, highly detailed, spoke ornate army, also gonna look great. So that that's about it. I think these dry brushes are great. You know, just make sure you clean them and maintain them. And I think they will last you a very, very long time. Please check out those other tips, those other styles of push blending and stipling. Um, there's lots of other great artists out there that have done uh, good stuff with that. N not my, you know, I got my Buster dry brushing right here. I got dry brushing down, guys. We got dry brushing down. Uh, super easy technique. Highly encourage you to check it out. Use it where you can to save what time you can. It isn't for everything, but it's definitely really good at a large number of things for sure. So Army Painter dry brushes for sale now on their website, in local stores, 20 bucks. Not bad at all, <laughs> if I do say so myself. Thank you very much for watching uh, this video, uh, unbox and uh, review and uh, paint jobs of uh, Custodius as well. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you can be the very first to like and comment on all our videos. And check out the links uh, to the brush cleaner, uh, both the Windsor Newton and also these, which will help keep all of your brushes, no matter which ones you're using, in tip-top shape uh, for the future years.